The time has come. You are a team player. You reach for the stars. You want to change the world. Join us on a mission to Thaleo. The future is now. Hello again, everyone. I am back in Michigan after an absolutely incredible weekend in Denver, Colorado, hanging out with fellow nerds and geeks at the System 76 headquarters for the Superfan 3 event. It was awesome. I'm still trying to process everything that's happened, and I'm going to make a few videos about this, but among the people that were there with me, was none other than Gardner Bryant, someone that I've wanted to collaborate with for a long time, but you know, I've been really busy and haven't had a chance to make it happen. But we were both there in person, and after the shindig was over, we decided to sit down, hit the record button, unscripted, just start talking about our experience and the things that happened there, and our impressions of the event and things that were revealed to us. So without further ado, here's that video. Enjoy. So, Jay. Yeah. Dude. Dude. We are in Denver, Colorado. We just finished with the Super Fan 3 event uh, hosted by System76. Yeah. And if we look strange, we're not drunk. If we look tired, we are. <laughs> because they kept us busy like the entire day. Uh, yeah. For good reasons. It was awesome. Yeah. So last night we went out to yep. the 1UP Arcade. Yep. And we got to meet with the System76 folks. Um, and then today, like all day today, we were at their headquarters yep. previewing uh, some of the new changes that they're making to Thelio. Yeah, and some yep, an overview of like the the build process, how they will these into existence, mm -hmm. the thoughts behind you know why they made the choices that they've made. I feel personally they gave us so much information. I really don't think there's any way I can remember all of it. No, no. It's like a massive overload of information about their design process and their thoughts that go into everything they do. It was yeah. Um, amazing. Yeah. And, and I, you know, we, I've been to all three of the super fan events. You've been to two of them. Two of them. Yep. Been to the last one in, uh, was it two and a half years ago? It feels like it. It feels something like, like it. that. Yeah. yeah. I think it was 2017. <laughs> That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we met there. Yep. Um, you, you arrived late um, at that time. So we didn't get really get a chance to become acquainted all that much because by the time you got there, if I remember correctly, they were already busy. Like they already oh, had yeah. us doing stuff. By the time I got there, there we, they had already done all of the like activities that they had planned. And so okay, yep. I really just arrived at the, at the party. That's right. Yeah. Yep. And so, but th I, I would say that this super fan event is at least an order of magnitude better yeah. like like yeah. just more polished and more there was just more uh fun like they i don't know it, and there was just a different energy with everybody too it, you know? it was and i was kind of thinking before we started recording because i'm also going to do um another vlog of my own at some point yeah and i'm thinking like what am i going to call it and i'm like i really want to call it the title being like system 76 knows how to party they do <laughs> yeah. and um yeah. but but it's all about the super fan event um and, and they they treated us really well uh, actually extremely well which we'll mm. get to near the end of the video the best is for last yeah. you know what i'm talking about oh yeah yeah you yeah. definitely know what i'm talking about but it's <laughs> you know it started off you know it's like the mission to thelio was the theme and right. they were all acting their part the future is now and we want you to join us now well, it feels like Disney World to us because it's like <laughs> when you are invited to your like your favorite computer manufacturer's headquarters to see what they're up to and be with other people and talk about Linux and other people don't think you're talking a different language. Yeah. You feel at home mm -hmm. and um, the games were fun. Like, like what do you think of the games like that had us do? The games were incredible. Uh, I really enjoyed um the the little they had, so they had like these little RC cars. Oh yeah. Uh, they were two wheels and they had like a little foot on the back that would drag, yeah. and then you would push a button and the foot would retract into the into the car 
and then it would like push itself out really fast so yeah. it would end up underneath the vehicle and it would like launch it into the air we had to navigate it through these things and and basically there was like a big reveal they're leading us up to but they wouldn't tell us what it is right and we had to find the clues for it and how many people would you say came this time like just a guess what like a dozen at least in terms of like uh press and fans i would say there was 12 or 13 yeah and meeting new contacts and friends and, and becoming acquainted with people is one of if not the greatest parts about the whole thing were you on team green with me i was on red you were on yeah, red i was on red so on my team when we were landing the the drones on the meteors uh the meteors were like made of i don't know like some kind of like foil and so yeah. um when the when our drones would land literally everyone in our team landed like hanging off the side rather oh, wow. than flat on top and it was it was hilarious what do you think of the sand like the, did you do that the part? sand yeah i mean so they've actually had that sort of demo for a while right and i've been i really like that so it's like an augmented reality sandbox yeah and there's like literally it's a sand. sandbox yeah. we're not talking like a virtual machine sandbox <laughs> with an application we mean like a box with sand in it yeah for real <laughs> Yeah, and it was like a full it was a full box with sand and a projector overhead with a, a like first gen connect um, that was like measuring. So that's the what depth. that thing was. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we were the my team was the first to get into this this room at the end, mm. where their CEO was there playing his role. Which, like he he was yeah, like he was dressed great. like a wizard. <laughs> A, so, a very dapper neon Crayola wizard. Yeah, well, maybe like Willy Wonka actually. Yeah, more like Willy Wonka than with a more citrus-like clothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so we, we get in there and we're like, we have the message and we think we got it. It said like, like um, we stand on the shoulders of giants or something is our message. And yeah, and he's like asking this question. So like, what's the rest? I'm like, that that's what the message is. And mm -hmm. we're we're coming up with these random things. And then all of a sudden another team comes in. And then they have a completely set, different set of clues, and yeah. it's more of the message. And then the last team comes in. I don't know if you were in the second or third that came in, and then we put it all together. Yeah. And, um, you know, what was the message? I'm so tired. I'm trying to remember I, the entire he, thing now. I'm it was struggling. a good message. Yeah. We stand on the shoulders of giants to see farther than we to, could have before or something like that. It was something, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm sure I'll remember when I wake up, Yeah. Uh, maybe. So Carl just grabs me by the shoulders and starts shaking me. And he's like, there's these alien things. Yeah. But he calls him, I'm like, what's going on? What's yeah. going on? What is he doing to me? And then all of a sudden we get Nerf guns and there's these space invaders, um, which I love the space invaders. That's been my computer yeah. wallpaper for a long time. Yeah. And, um, and these, these yeah. aren't like, these aren't like uh, cheapo like space invaders you buy from the store. Right. They're not like paper cutouts. These are like, they use their laser cutter. To actually cut these out, yes. yeah, yeah. Jo nice. uh, Joshua was telling me they used their laser cutter to cut these out, and they had what? How many? I mean, they probably had like a hundred of these. At least, yeah. And, and we had to shoot them with the Nerf guns because yeah. they were the aliens that. Because the whole theme was a Thelio system, and they sent uh, people out there that they haven't heard from again, and right. we were sent in to kind of try to figure out what actually happened, and that that was the theme, and they all played their role. Yeah. I'm part of the mission. <laughs> So are we ready to talk about the what happened after we defeated the yeah. aliens? We defeated the aliens in a in a point blank massacre. Yep. We rushed up and over them, and then as soon as we defeated all of them, sirens. There, there's like there these, was like like, like yeah. sirens went off, and then I saw this like door open. It's like a garage door. Speaking I hear sirens. sirens in the back. We're in, <laughs> we're in the city in Denver. Like God, yeah. God knows what that's for. I hope they're okay. Uh, anyway, so the door goes up. And steam comes out, yeah. and there's a bunch of Thelio desktops. Yeah, with custom engravings on the front. Super fan engraving. Yeah. We all are getting a Thelio. And the only reason why I don't have it right here to say, look what I have, is because how do you like check a desktop computer right. on a plane, right? right. So they're going to like <laughs> ship them out to us. But um, they're giving us a, a Thelio computer yeah. that's ours, and it's... Not just like here's a computer; it's engraved super fan. So, so that's ours. It's just like a very special thing. Like we're gonna have computers that are made literally for us. Mm -hmm. They make the computers for the people, but these in particular, it's like they have the, the engraving. So it's kind of like 
you know, here's a computer, like, I'll never give it up. Like, it could be 20 yeah. years from now. And, oh, yeah. and, like, completely obsolete. But look at this thing. And mm-hmm. they're so beautiful. They are. The, and, the, you know, and then after they, and they told us that they were, were going to give us these machines, they turned the lights on. Mm-hmm. And they took us on a tour of their manufacturing facility. Yes. And we do have footage of that. Yeah, we do. The audio may or may not be of good quality. <laughs> well, that's we why we're may doing or may this. Not, <laughs> we may or may not be doing voiceovers, or we may or may not even be cutting it into the video right now. Right. But, yeah, we were, we were walked around the process. And what's amazing to me is, you know, the open source mentality is awesome, yep. the software, because you have software. If you decide you hate something, um, you, can, you could actually get into the code and fix it, find a friend who knows how to code, pay a developer, but you can get it fixed. You got the code, you could do something with it. Mm-hmm. You could rebuild it yourself. If you don't trust the binary, you can compile it yourself. And the desktops are made with that same mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And I mean, like, so their machines that they're making, the, Ma- the Thelio, uh, are open hardware. Right. And they are, they are publishing these schematics. I think they may have already done that. If I'm not I think mistaken. they have. Yeah, They're, they made some revisions, but basically, he was um, Carl was mentioning that if you have the the machine to make it, you you could do that. Obviously, not very many people have a laser cutting machine, mm-hmm. and but he was mentioning that a lot of these Maker Fair areas that you can go to that have these types of things, you could take these schematics there and say, I, I want to do this. I want to mm-hmm. build this, and 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 here's the schematics, and and you get the parts out. You have the case, and the fact that like they are so open about this uh, it speaks to their character as a company right. like they they truly care about like uh the community they do that's i mean that's why they do the super fan events right. is be, it's not just to like be like you get a thelio and you get a thelio i know i was thinking about the oprah thing right <laughs> yeah. like like you get a computer you get a computer uh, check under your seat you got a card free computer right um that's what i was thinking but but yeah you know but for me, it's it's all in the eyes. Like you could tell if somebody's acting or if they really like what they're doing yeah. with, by looking into their eyes. Yeah. If their eyes are sparkling. You can't hide that. You can't fake that. Right. And each and every person in there, they're all about this. They're like they live and breathe this. They are mm-hmm. passionate about it. They put this together for us. It, I'm sure it took them at least the entire week prepping, if not way longer, oh, to yeah. build everything, get it ready, mm-hmm. to build our computers, and have them on that pedestal. Which I, I have a picture of this and, mm. you know, the, the, this whole thing, um, those computers. And there's, they just love what they do. And Carl especially just can't stop smiling. And that's a, yeah. such a great thing. that He loves this. Yeah, he does. We love this. We do. Yeah, I mean, Carl is such a just gregarious person, you know. And you can talk to him about anything. In fact, we had this round table yes. after they yes, showed us the round their... table. That went yeah. on for a long time in a good way. It was way. a three and a half hour discussion. It I felt think. like it. It felt yeah. like I was I was watching like the length of time I could have watched the extended edition of one of the Lord of the Rings movies. And yeah, I mean, but it, it, the time flies by because you have all these fans and, and press people. We had um, so many. Someone smart from people. Linus Tech Tips was there. I forgot his uh, name. Andrew. Andrew was there. Uh, we had uh, Dan from Jupiter Broadcasting was there. Um, us, obviously. Jason um, Evangelo. Yep. Yep. And, of course, the winners that, that entered into the contest. We had one that um, built a uh, Kubernetes, no, a Docker Swarm server with Raspberry Pis, which is something I want to do, um, which is awesome. We had someone who developed a um, GPG encryption method, mm-hmm. like a file system. That was his entry. Someone who does, uh, I believe it's kind of like a, a doormat type thing, like he designs it with System76 hardware. Mm-hmm. Had him there and some other winners. I can't remember. I mean, not to guy discount anyone. But Frank Lloyd White, uh, the Frank yeah. Lloyd Wright Foundation doing some like really amazing designs with, uh, I think he said an Oryx Pro, is that right? I think, um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's just like, so all of these really awesome, smart, talented people right. were sitting around a table and we were having a conversation with, uh, Carl Richel, the CEO, yep. uh, with uh, Ian. Uh, yep. I'm not sure what his title is, but he's he is, like a software guru. Yeah, I would say like yeah. a high, he's an engineer. I just call him an engineer. I think yeah. that's the best way to describe him. But he, he is very knowledgeable because I had a lot of conversations with, with Ian. Like mm-hmm. They're all brilliant. They they're are. all brilliant in different ways. And the he, thing that yeah. stands out to me too, and I think I said this to Joshua, the marketing guy, is like if – if if uh, Steve Jobs were alive and he were to have this kind of roundtable with Apple fans. Apple fans would be able to ask questions 
but I don't know if Steve Job would be able to a- answer half of the questions that Carl was able to answer. They they are like Carl's System seventy six is the Apple. It's like they're they're the inverted Apple. Yeah, because they are all about Linux. Mm-hmm. You know, a- a- like Apple's all about Mac OS, but um, Apple's like this is what you want. Like we're gonna make this thing. This is what we think you want. Here it is. Yeah, and. They are making a product for Linux fans. They are to us what Apple is to macOS fans, mm-hmm. right? They're, they're all about this. This is ours. They're, they're, they're in our corner. Linux fans giving us a product that is designed for us and also by us because, you know, we were at the last Superfan event mm-hmm. having a round table. Mm-hmm. And some of the things we recommended then are in this now. Yeah. And they're there for us. But it's not like this is what you want. It's like... What do you actually want? Is this okay? Like they would literally say, "This is what we're doing." What do you think about that? Do yeah. you like it? Like he asked us. I actually, I was about, about to get ahead of myself here and reveal the other thing. I'm not ready to reveal right. yet. <laughs> but well, um, they were so they were talking about uh, like yeah. the, the the changes that they are making to Thelio, right? Uh, just like the the tweaks that they've made um, to the to the design, um, like solving some of the cooling things and the the fan. Uh, they are. What is it called? The fan curve. Um, that the, the there was that the the noise they have yep. a sound booth booth yeah um, with oh, a yeah, bunch that of foam cool. it's very cool it looks like a Rubik's cube and yeah. they they have a, some you know measurement devices in there to to know like how loud are their computers and they are like literally explaining to us in this process well the fan speed is zero to two fifty five mm-hmm. and some fans are a different um, speed or react differently depending on what that value is in the Linux kernel right. to represent that they're trying to like can still control it not let the fan control right that but them control the fan and compensate for the um speed of the fan because it's all about how loud it is and right. they don't want it to be loud and the like they they were saying that different manufacturers have different microcontrollers yes. in the fans and even though your motherboard's delivering like pwm to to control the fan right. the microcontroller converts that into whatever and then changes it into something else so they right. don't you know a lot of like fan manufacturers don't have actual you don't have actual control like fine control so what right. they're talking about is like being able to calibrate that stuff and get it like on point so that they have absolute control uh of the fan speeds right. so that they can ramp up when they absolutely need to right. but maintain a more um what's the term that they use the um, passive cooling passive for, cooling yeah but only like up to a certain point and then they kick in the fan when they need to and that's yes, really cool and that was like one of the things that anthony from linus tech Tips was talking about is that uh like in their review of the thelio they said that the the audio profile the sound profile of the thelio was you know in the first stage was like not great it like the fan curve was right. not dialed in perfectly and it would ramp up and down and it had like these issues and so system 76 was like you know what we hear that and they went and built this like rubik's cube shaped room with that is like, soundproof yeah. so they could do actual testing they have equipment right. in there that does actual audio testing and um because of that they've been able to build uh or make small tweaks to the case right and, and fix the problem and, and fix the problem what yeah. i like about this is it's, it's like other companies that you know you, you buy this model of a computer and then the next model they fix the problem mm-hmm. what they're doing is Let's just say you, ha- you you bought the computer and it has a fan issue or something. It's like, okay, well, that sucks. You, you send it in for, like, you know, repair, and they will replace that component with the current revision of that part of the computer. So what you get back, it's like every, every piece can be swapped out. So if that component was found to create loud noise or has some kind of flaw, they'll throw that out when you send it in and put the new one in. And yeah. and give it back to you, and then it's it's iterative like that. It's not like this is all one unit, and if one thing is bad, you throw out the whole unit. It's right. like you have your computer, replace the part that's bad, or or maybe it's a firmware update, whatever it is. It's all like interchangeable, yeah. Um, which which is awesome. And I mean, there's just so much that they went over, and um, yeah. they were talking about uh, Pop OS. Yes. And things that they're doing with oh Pop OS. Oh my God! Like I am just I'm so fangirling right excited now. Excited about this. Like. The thing that like really stood out yeah. to me. So they were asking what we all thought about stuff. Right. And every time, uh, I would say maybe half the time, someone would say, "I have a suggestion." Carl would get this smile on his face and be like, 
Oh yeah, we're already doing that. Um, they're testing i3, not because you know we're going to have an i3 version of Pop! OS, but they're going to build an extension targeting 2004 that gives you the keyboard shortcuts to do the tiling that you can do in i3, yep. but in GNOME. So one of the things is like... Uh, Carl has been working on this ultra wide monitor. I love his monitor. It's I so want it cool. so bad. It's so cool. It's like it's like thirteen thirty. Or no, what was it? It was like three thousand something pixels wide and ten eighty pixels it's tall. It's like you can't look at the thing <laughs> and see the whole monitor right. unless you back up. Yeah, it's not like a big monitor. Like no, no. It's like it's it's this, that tall. Yeah, and, and very and wide. And it's like taller than the the view Your of field us. Of view. Yeah. It was it was like insane. Three displays long. Yeah, and oh, and man, like I want that monitor. I want it too. It's really yeah. cool. And so they're working on an extension for GNOME yeah. that will allow you to to have all the keyboard commands that you're used to um, with i3 and other tiling window managers to I, allow you to like automatically tile your windows in GNOME, and you can do the expose stuff. Uh, you can do like all the normal things you're yep. accustomed to in GNOME, but also you don't have to take your hands off the keyboard. keyboard. Shortcuts for the win. And that's that's super cool, and I'm <laughs> very so cool. excited to try it. I want to see yeah. how this extension works in multi-monitor mode. But I mean, keep in mind, we said extension. We didn't yeah. say, you know, you're going to have to download Pop OS. I mean, obviously it's going to be baked in, but mm -hmm. we said extension. GNOME supports extension. Mm -hmm. That means you could put that extension in Debian or whatever you use uh, theoretically. And get that benefit. It's they're not saying you have to use Pop OS to get this. Yeah, like it's an extension. You can right. have this, and you can use it wherever it makes sense to use it. Exactly. And then the other thing, I'm starting to remember some things like uh, flat pack support. Flat pack support. Yeah. In Pop Shop, and it's not like you know how some distros do it, where it's like this is the version you get. Like we're gonna say you really need the the flat pack version of this, or they they they'll make a recommendation. So they might make the recommendation that you know the flat pack is newer in this application than what the distribution repository is shipped with, but you might not want that. Maybe you want nothing to do with flat packs, or or you just don't want that version for compatibility reasons. You can you'll be able to click on Pop Shop. Mm -hmm. It'll be a drop down. You can say you know thanks anyway, but I want the Debian package instead. Click mm -hmm. on the Debian package, and that's what you get. Yeah, and that's great for new user users because if if they don't care. They hit the install button and it works. And they don't care how it works. Right. It just works. But for us, we might have specific compatibility needs, and that's not for us. We want the Debian version, whatever the case might be. That's going to be in a Pop Shop. Mm -hmm. They're doing theme changes mm -hmm. and trying to make the framework around GNOME better for. I, sh I keep saying GNOME, GNOME, whatever. Mm -hmm. They need. They're trying to make the framework better overall because theming is. I love GNOME. It's theming a disaster. It's a disaster in GNOME. Theming is a complete disaster. Well, so theming doesn't really exist. Technically, the way it no, it doesn't exist. Exists in right. any other desktop environment. What what they are doing is styling, right? right. And so, like, you can check GNOME at Guadec 2019, mm -hmm. uh, System 76, Purism, a bunch of other people were there. Elementary, I believe, too. Yeah, because uh, they have an in-house person there. Cassidy works yep. on that project. Right. So. And so all these people were hammering out the details mm -hmm. for specifying styling in GNOME and yes. to, to actually unify it to allow brands like System76 to uh, customize the the Adwita theme to right. more closely match their brand as System76. But it can work in the opposite because the app developer yeah. might say, I don't want Pop! OS colors on my app. We have a branding scheme that we adhere to that we right. paid a heck of a lot of money to somebody to design for us. Mm -hmm. They can override that operating system or, or desktop environment color scheme to make sure that the intended color scheme of their vision is on their app. Yeah, and just a, their app. A great example of that is GNOME Web too. Where right. Like one of the uh, I was reading uh, the article that came out of Guadic, and they were talking about uh, the fact that like GNOME Web had to do kind of like this hacky stuff in order to make the window mm. uh, in private browsing mode blue. And so they were able to, uh, with this new thing, they're able to specify different instances of the app running. They're able to just be like, all right, change the window to blue. Right. And so this has a lot of really cool implications, including allowing um, Pop! OS to have its own brand, its own style, its own colors specified. Uh, semantically, and to have it work 
uh, just work out of the box. You know, I think I think there's one change we really do need to talk about, especially for you, more so for you than me, and that is the gaming improvements. Mm. Because, you know, that's why we're tired, right? We probably would have mentioned this earlier. But um, so the problem that we deal with in Linux is like the hybrid graphics thing, right? Because you have you can run on the Intel card, and it's like, well, the games aren't going to run well. And you can mm. do hybrid graphics, mm -hmm. which will make the games run well if you tell them to run on NVIDIA. But how do you tell them that? And they are going to look into GNOME settings to go inside there, and you can just add your game. You just click the button, browse, or you know, get a list of your games, click on it, hit the button, and that game will run on NVIDIA. Yeah, so this is like the, the applications in GNOME's settings, right? Right. And so in there... There's good for each application. You can actually go in and specify if you want it to run in dedicated graphics right. or uh, integrated yeah. graphic mode. Yes, and for so sure. that's really cool. It's huge. It's, I mean, because they just introduced, or have they done it already? Uh, the hybrid graphics mode. So it is there. So yeah. so it's just not all the way there. So right. in 1910, it was not on the release notes unless mm -hmm. they've added it. Uh, if you look at look at this, you will not find it. And then it's like two weeks later. I'm kind of feeling like, you know, 1910 is a good release. It's not that exciting. And then they're just casually talking in the chat room about hybrid graphics being a thing. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's not even on the release notes. It's like, oh, just do it. Just install your updates and reboot and it'll be there. I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, you just like randomly yeah. enabled hybrid graphics for all your people. I know it has right. to be a certain chipset, certain video card, vintage or newer for this to work. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they don't even brag about it. But yeah. I asked him, why don't you guys like make this a big thing? He's like, oh, we're not done yet because we need to put a GUI, but they're going to backport that you don't even have to run 2004 like mm -hmm. he was saying 1804 yeah we'll get this and um you know that's kind of huge because some games like you don't want all games to run on nvidia like final fantasy 6 is my favorite game of all time you don't need nvidia for that right so i'm not going to enable nvidia and have this fan in the battery drain to play final fantasy 6 let's be honest but i can make that decision as the user this game runs on intel this mm -hmm. game runs on nvidia whatever i want but then they're actually looking into making this a desktop spec to make it like respected and give the developers a way to say, we recommend that this be run on NVIDIA, yeah. put something in that spec. So the user doesn't like know to do this, like it'll just launch and they have to curate this, which is, is there's probably no getting around that, but they're willing right. to take that on. Yeah. Yeah. And props to them. I mean, oh this, it's such a cool idea. It is. Um, I, I, when I was when I reviewed the Adder uh, mm -hmm. workstation, like I had to like switch between manually um, the two reboot, yeah, and oh, reboot, man. and it was like that sucked. We you Linux know? users hate rebooting so and much; so, <laughs> so, we yeah. don't want to do it. And so the fact uh. that like they're doing the hybrid graphics now, that's freaking cool, and that you can like specify apps that you want to run in you know integrated mode or in dedicated mode i mean that's right. just so cool and then they talked about what's next what's yeah. coming what would it what, what uh, we don't have now they say this to the end yeah. they, they, they did this is of, like the reason they invited us here it was one of the biggest reasons was to ask for our feedback on their next initiative and yeah. the next initiative is building laptops in-house we've all yeah. kind of knew they were going that direction but it's kind of like yeah it takes a long time we don't know if it's going to be like five years from now ten years from now they're starting the process in january that doesn't mean yeah. they're going to be shipping anything in january right it means like they're going to be building the prototypes and and they're asking us like what do you guys want to see in a laptop mm -hmm. and getting our feedback you know do you like the track point you know what kind of key travel are you looking for how many millimeters it crosses the line mm -hmm. they want to know how many millimeters is just millimeters not inches <laughs> millimeters crosses the line right on what, this how thick is too thick for a laptop it, it was a big part of that discussion yeah. um you know the, the design of everything you and, know and people were giving their opinions on like the size of the trackpad right. and, the, and the 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 play and the hinge you know yes like, that was a big thing for a lot of people like yeah. you like you prefer to be like you can like open it wide and you right. can kind of you can be like here and just kind of like have it open which yeah. makes total sense right and um you know that that's not possible i don't think on any laptop they have right now yeah and battery um, life battery life thing. is huge and so they're they're taking this on next so i mean even stuff about man. like the 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 uh badges like for for your um right the little stickers for your cpu or whatever like they were even t people were even talking about that and carl was like 
yeah, we hear you there. But so, but then my question was like, how? Like, like, anybody who knows anything about manufacturing, and I know nothing, but I do know this: minimum order is required for pretty much everything. Like, mm-hmm. even when I hear like Purism talking about their process, they had to have like a like in order for Intel to even like grace them with a a discussion, they would have to have like a certain number of motherboards ordered to even get their attention. Yeah. And not only did they do this, I mean, our event was sponsored by what Samsung. AMD like sponsored it too. Like they mm-hmm. sponsored the CPU of the computers they're giving us. Mm-hmm. They had sponsors doing this. Intel is they they got that covered. Like they're they're yeah. having that conversation. They're at the point where they could sit down and talk to Intel about making this happen. Yeah. On laptops. And it, you know it was really cool too. Like there, that obstacle course where you drove the stuff through. Did yeah. you notice that those were Ryzen uh, boxes? You know, my, I think I'm having vision problems, to be completely honest with <laughs> well, you. It was so but, dark in But there, see, dude. I've noticed, like, yeah. you're noticing things better than me, because um, I'm, like, just, like, squinting, like, is that, like, what is that down there? Um, I didn't even notice a big Rubik's Cube thing that was, like, right there. Yeah. It was dark to, in my defense, which was a sound booth when they turned the lights on. Yeah. But, I mean, they're going to be building things like laptops in-house, mm. and... Um, it's so it's, cool. That's amazing I mean, to me. They were talking about, like, doing the design of the PCB themselves... And, and getting right. that manufactured for them and then doing Open like, firmware all the Open firmware is going to be in there. It's not yeah. on the Thelio yet. Uh, right. they, they want to, but um, I'm sure they will. I think they said they will. Did they say they will? I thought they did. I don't remember. They said they're working on it. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah, but then like the laptops, that that's already a thing right now. You could buy a, um, a Galago Pro or I believe it's a Darter Pro with that on there, a core boot right now, mm-hmm. which is actually in their GitHub. You can actually see the code. But that's going to be in their Intel motherboards because they... We're working with Intel developers to get core boot and make that happen. And yeah. I was kind of surprised, like, like Intel like wants core boot to happen, or I don't know if they care or not, but mm. they have their own initiative in that regard. But it's like everything for them is like coming together. And the desktops, we went to the the second super fan. It's like here's what we're thinking about making, or this is what's coming. And they had the prototypes. And when everyone else saw Thelio, it was like, oh, yeah, I remember that from a while back. Like, mm-hmm. you, you guys are just now seeing this, but it's not news to us. Yeah. But that was preparing for the next phase because the desktops are easier, easier than laptops, let's be honest. But right. that's where the real difficulties come with those little tiny parts and that little chassis. Mm-hmm. And that's what they're taking on. And I'll tell you right now, I am very excited to have a custom-built, made-in-the-USA like wow. laptop from yes. from system 76 like that oh. is something that i am so excited for oh God, and they were talking about like they were asking us like what materials they want uh, we want them to m- make this yeah. machine in and it's like they were they were throwing out like carbon fiber yeah. and uh and well, did they wood. say magnesium alloy or was I, that, magnesium I alloy yeah um what was there was another one too but so they're they're basically also saying like they're gonna build like start building palm rests first I think, mm-hmm. and then just use them themselves. Leather, Leather was another one. Yeah, that was one because they they wanted like use it and kind of see how it wears down yeah. with usage to know what not to do. Yeah. Uh, before they they come out with that and so the screen too they're yeah. talking about. Yeah. They're talking about possibly giving everyone a choice because there's some yeah. like OLED screens are expensive and right. not they were everybody talking wants about that. The but, Infinity Edge type thing as well yeah i vaguely remember something about. well i mean it was kind of like that that part was impulsive which that part kind of made me worried because it's like oh yeah we'll do that it's like yeah they were talking about small bezels that's that's what they were talking it's not that easy to just say i'm gonna do that like because but but then the problem is actually it's not a problem carl's so excited about this yeah oh yeah like he he wants this like it's like how does this guy sleep he's so into this (laughs) like like he's probably dreaming about these computers and thinking about it all day long, and, yeah. and that's a good thing. But yeah. it's it, he. This is what he. What, it all comes full circle now because that's what they're for. That they're all about it. And you know, I, I just wish I could remember like everything they talked about. And I'm yeah. gonna probably wake up in the morning and be like, oh, I should have mentioned that yeah. other thing that you know we we're too tired to remember right now. Because I don't even know what time it is with the time zone difference from Michigan, but like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's it's late, but it's yeah. it's great because we we were treated very well, especially well. I mean, we got oh, yeah. a Thelio, man. Like, yeah. like we're we're gonna get I a desktop. So, so beyond stoked oh, for that. I can't wait for that to come. I out. have like so many ideas what I'm gonna do with that. They did not give us a timeline. No. They did not say when we can expect this thing to be willed into existence and to set the expectations. I think it was two and a half years ago, roughly when they revealed 
the then unnamed Thelio desktops. And they had it prototypes took a while. at that point. They had prototypes at that point. So it could be three years or more. Who knows yeah. how long and it's going to take them to make this happen. Right. So it's not coming that, you know, in January, but they're going to be prototyping in-house. And they may or may not even show anything yet until they have something that, to actually show. Right. Until they actually know what they want to do, what materials, what screens. And uh, maybe I'll try to sneak over there in like six months to a year. And <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Yeah. Um, I'm looking around the room, like anything new? Like can I can I see what you guys got going on here? Yeah. Um, to see this, get a hint of what's coming because um, I'm really excited for everything that they're doing. Like Pop OS has already stopped me from being a distro hopper. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah. Which is huge for me because I get tired of the same old, same old. I need something like um, different. But they keep solving my problems for me. Yeah. I'm going so, to I'm going to like give Pop OS another spin. Yeah. Um, I'm Manjaro user right now, but everything they were talking about here is like made me want to try it again. I just wanted to say to yeah. the team, to Carl, to everyone yes. who made this possible, to the sponsors of this event, yes. thank you. Thank you. This has been an amazing experience. I hope wow. you do it again soon. To have been a part of this it. is like yeah. like to, to not be like hearing about it, but yeah. to be telling you guys about it and. In the in the passionate people that we got to interact with, the new connections that we've made, mm -hmm. and and um, you know being all about it, like I can't thank them enough. If you believe in the work that we do here, you can yes. subscribe to our YouTube channels. We've only got like ten seconds left before yeah. it shuts off. So yep. thank you for watching this video, yep. guys. Check us out. Check the links below and all that other stuff. Yeah, we will talk to you later.